I think at this point, most people and hopefully all people agree that exercise is a benefit to our health. However, even with that general knowledge, we are still discovering new mechanisms by which exercise offers us these truly incredible health benefits. One of those mechanisms was completely misunderstood for quite a long time, but a series of studies show that a molecule produced when we exercise a particular way is a major reason for exercise's health impact across our musculature, our brain, our metabolism, and more. That molecule is lactate. In this scientific review, the researchers go over 74 studies on the different ways this exercise-associated wonder molecule affects our body. Herein, they point out that lactate is produced from our cells, mostly our muscle cells. But at rest, our lactate levels tend to be quite low. It is only when we exercise and exercise a certain way that the lactate levels rise in the blood. We'll get into those specifics in a bit, but for now, let me take you into your muscle cells. Your muscle cells, much like many of your other cells, use two primary metabolic pathways to generate cellular energy. One pathway is called the oxidative phosphorylation and uses the combination of sugars, so that's glucose, and fat molecules known as fatty acids and oxygen to generate cellular energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate through your mitochondria. At rest, meaning sleep, uh, sitting, standing, your muscle cells rely on this system to generate cellular energy, and it fulfills that role without so much as a hiccup. However, your cells have the ability to switch to using glucose for energy, that is A, oxygen independent, and B, mitochondria independent. However, your cells typically only use this system when the oxidative phosphorylation system cannot keep up with the cellular energy demand, limited primarily by oxygen delivery. If oxidative phosphorylation is maxed out, then the cells will rely on glucose to supplement energy generation. This second metabolic system is called glycolysis. Why am I telling you all this? Simple. At the end of glycolysis, lactate is produced. So glucose enters the cell at the top of the glycolysis, and by the end, the glucose molecule has gone through many enzymatic reactions to turn into lactate. Okay, why does this matter? Well, when we consider lactate's role in metabolism, we see why. You see, if your muscle cells rely more and more on glucose for energy generation, that is because the muscle cells are using up large amounts of energy at a pace that oxidative phosphorylation cannot keep up. Meaning, in the bigger picture, you're moving faster than can be sustained. Meaning that you are running, uh, lifting weights, pulling a car, lifting earth, or something high intensity for you or Superman. Now, lactate is produced and can now enter the mitochondrion to further generate energy or it can be exported out of the muscle cell. When exported, this serves two main functions. One, lactate will find its way into the liver, where it is then used in gluconeogenesis, a reverse metabolism that changes lactate back to glucose, which is usually exported out of the liver and used by other cells of the body for energy. The second benefit is that it acts as a proton eliminator. To explain that further, if you've ever exercised intensely or lifted the earth, you'll know that your muscles begin to burn over time, making it more difficult to continue exercising. This is caused by a mass accumulation of protons. No, not, not <clears throat> proteins, protons. <laughs> protons are atoms that dictate the acidity of your environment. In brief, the more protons present in an environment, like the muscle cell, the greater the acidity. Lactate, when it is produced through glycolysis, absorbs protons in its molecular structure. And when we export the lactate into the blood, the protons leave with it. So this lowers the acidity within the cells and we can then perform better. Speaking to that, 
Lactate rises significantly when we exercise and it has wide reaching effects. For example, high intensity interval training increases lactate levels significantly and through mechanisms that we'll discuss shortly, this has an effect on mitochondrial biogenesis, meaning the birth of new mitochondria and improved muscle metabolism. Lactate even seems to have effects on muscle regeneration and recovery and comparisons between different exercise modalities stimulate lactate differently. If you're interested in learning about that, as well as the studies wherein people supplement with lactate and how it improved their performance, just join the Physionic Insiders where you'll find the extended version of this video as well as a full library of these types of videos, including exclusive videos and much more. The link is in the description. So lactate finds its way into the blood and aids in a number of muscle and metabolic ways. But there are some surprising discoveries on the relationship between lactate and the brain as well. It has been discovered that lactate can pass through the blood-brain barrier and access the brain, where it interacts with neurons, those are brain cells, like those found in the hippocampus. In this region of the brain, it increases the production of a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, which is heavily implicated in synaptogenesis, the sprouting of new synapses between neurons, and generally improves memory and cognitive function. This occurs through a number of mechanisms from increasing calcium intake inside the cells, which then activate a protein called CREB. CREB and similar proteins then move into the nucleus of the cell and bind the BDNF gene, which then allows for the production of the BDNF protein, which then itself encourages gene expression of a number of prosynaptogenesis genes. Additionally, lactate also increases NADH levels, which is one of the nicotinamide family of molecules. These molecules influence the activity of sirtuin proteins, which regulate gene expression in the nucleus of our cells. Lactate may also directly affect these proteins. Anyway, the activation of the sirtuin protein leads to the greater expression of the PGC1-alpha gene, which then produces a protein responsible for the generation of new mitochondria mitochondrial biogenesis. And a few steps further, PGC1-alpha also increases BDNF expression indirectly. But the fun doesn't end there. Yes, we're about to continue with molecular biology. Lactate also binds receptors called HCARs in the cells called parasites and fibroblasts found around the blood vessels. In doing so, an intracellular cascade of proteins is activated called the ERK pathway. No, not ERK, as in I'm irking you with this molecular biology, but ERK, E-R-K, which is a family of proteins that activate each other to ultimately also express genes in the nucleus. But instead of BDNF in this scenario, we're talking about the expression of VEGF protein. Before the <laughs> carnivore enthusiasts eat me for saying the word VEG, this is a protein, not a vegetable. <laughs> Anyway, VEGF is a potent stimulator of angiogenesis, or the production of new blood vessels, meaning that it increases the blood flow in the brain long term. Now, I could go on because the mechanisms extend far beyond what I've already explained here. However, let me introduce you to something else that I found wildly interesting. Some of the fair critique levied against lactate might be, well... How do we separate all of the other mechanisms of exercise from lactate itself? Is this all a lactate specific or is it an exercise general effect? Well, for that, the researchers injected lactate into animals and found all of these effects to be consistent. However, lactate exposure alone also has some evidence for it reducing anxiety and depression, as well as reducing signs of mental stress. The mechanisms aren't entirely clear, but one that has been suggested is that anxiety and stress can reduce the expression of the proteins known to regulate our genome, called HDAC, or histone deacetylases. These proteins regulate the opening and closing of our genes, and specific ones have an effect on the pro-anxiety and anti-anxiety molecules that are produced by our cells. As such, having lower levels of these HDACs can then increase our feelings of anxiety. And guess what lactate does? It increases these proteins in the brain. Again, this is preliminary research, so there's much more at play that needs to be elucidated. But this is pretty cool to see. At least, well, hey, I think so. 
Oh, did I mention that lactate also affects the heart? Man, I mean, the research on lactate is really pointing out all of the different ways that it affects us. I wouldn't put it past it to be one of the major contributors to our health. But there are ways of increasing it, of course, like high-intensity interval training or supplementing may be an avenue as well. Again, check out the Physionic Insiders for more on that. I would venture that no matter what, pairing lactate's benefits with the other benefits of exercise is likely the better route to go. But, you know, lactate isn't the only health molecule in the world. This one also plays a major role. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you there. Thank you.